Blender keeps evolving. And if you ever watched a tutorial and thought, wait, why is this different now? Or where did that button go? This video is for you. Today I'll show you how to navigate Blender's UI changes. We have thousands of tutorials solving nearly every Blender problem imaginable. You just need to know how to access them. We'll focus on more recent changes between Blender 2.8 and 4.5, but if you're feeling adventurous, I'll even show you how to decode ancient tutorials when Blender used to look like this, or even like this. Bone layers versus bone collections. This is a big one. So I'm in Blender 3.6. It is the last version that has the old bone layer system. Here's how it works. If I have multiple bones, I can press M and move that bone to another collection. It will disappear because this collection is currently not visible. But if I just go to the layers and shift and click on that layer, it will appear again. And if I shift and click again, it will disappear. I can also press M and then shift and click on another layer. And now this bone will appear on multiple layers, which can be useful occasionally. And that's about it. Moving bones and enabling and disabling collections. And by the way, just ignore the protected layers. They are an old system that was deprecated long ago. Now we'll go to Blender's current version and check out the new bone collections. Bone collections replace the old bone layers, but they are quite similar. You can think of each bone collection as one of the boxes in the bone layers. But the difference now is that I can name these collections and I can add and remove them. So instead of being limited to 36 layers, I can have as many as I want. But other than that, it works the same way. If I select the bone and press M, I can move it to another collection and I can enable and disable that collection. To place a bone on multiple collections, I now need to press Shift M and add it to another collection. So the functionality is the same and you should be able to translate the old system to the new one or vice versa. Now back to Blender 3.6, it had something called bone groups. For that, I need to go to pose mode, create a new group and set a color for it and then click assign. Now any bone within this bone group will have the red color. So I can select a couple more and assign them and create another group and assign this bone to it. So these bone groups were a bit weird. They served two purposes, one to set colors and two they can serve as selection sets. So if I select the first group and click select, that will select the red bones. In Blender 4 and later, we don't have bone groups anymore. Now the bone collections can serve as selection sets. So if I make a couple of bones and make sure they are all on this collection, I can press select and that will select all of the bones on this collection. And to assign colors, we now have to go to the bone tab, viewport display, and now we have a special bone color property. So I can make this one red. And if I want the other ones to be red as well, I can just right click and copy to select it. And this makes a lot of sense because it decouples bone colors from bone groups. Now we'll cover using symmetry in weight paint mode because the setting that controls this was moved a couple of times in a couple of consecutive Blender versions. This is Blender 2.9 and in any previous version, this is what you'll see. I'll select the armature, then the mesh and go to weight paint mode. And so we have the symmetry settings and then mirror XYZ and under options we have X mirror. And to paint actual symmetrical weights, you need to use the X mirror option. So now if I select this bone to activate its group and paint, the same weights will be mirrored on the other side. And if I select a central bone, just painting on one side will paint on the other side. If I disable the X mirror option and then enable mirror X, then painting for this bone will paint weights for the same bone on the other side, which you almost always don't want. Now to Blender 2.91. Blender made a couple of confusing changes here. To paint symmetrical weights, I need to disable this X mirror option, which now is linked to this confusing X under option. So just ignore this X and use vertex groups X symmetry. And this will paint on the other side. And again, if I use this mirror option, then I can paint weights for the left bone on the right side now Blender 2.92. Here it is similar to the previous version. You need to disable Mirror X and just enable this Vertex Group X setting. And this is Blender 2.93, which made one final change. So this is what you're going to see in all future versions of Blender. Now to enable symmetrical weight painting, I need to use exactly these settings here. I have to tick Mirror Vertex Groups in the mirror setting below it, which is quite different from the previous versions, but that's how we do it now for whatever reason. And in this version, if you want to paint weights for the left arm on the right side, then you disable mirror vertex groups and enable X mirror. So these changes in the symmetry settings were slightly annoying. Now I'm going to show you 
other changes in weight paint mode which are actually quite good, but you have to be aware of them regardless. In all the versions of Blender, like what I have here, if my character is bound to this armature, I can select the armature, then shift select the mesh and go to weight paint mode. Now I'm in a special mode and I can control click on a bone to activate its vertex group and then I can paint. To select multiple bones, I had to shift and click on other bones. And this can be useful when performing some weights operations. And to draw positive weights, you would generally use the draw or the add brush and just change the strength here and paint. If you want to subtract weights, you can go to the subtract brush, which is exactly the same as just switching this blend mode to subtract. But then I can click and erase weights. And if I want to blur the weights, I have to switch to the blur tool and click to blur. This is what you have to do between Blender 2.8 and 3.6. In Blender 4, things changed. In Blender 4 and later, you go to weight paint mode the same way, select the armature, shift select the mesh, go to weight paint mode. But now bone selection is different. I personally alt and click, but you can also control shift and click to activate a bone. And to select multiple bones, you can alt shift and click. If that doesn't work for you for some reason, you now also have selection tools in weight paint mode. So I can just box select bones and press alt A to deselect them. And this change in the selection key map was made because now painting is made a lot more streamlined. If I just switch to the add brush, I can click to add weights, I can control click to subtract weights, and I can shift and click to smooth the weights. So these are the major changes, but here is something else that could confuse you. Since Blender 4.3, we now have these slightly different brushes. And there is no add brush, for example. But that is totally okay, these are just quick presets. The most important setting here is the blend. So if a tutorial uses the add brush, just switch blend to add. And then again you can click to add weights, control click to subtract and shift click to smooth. In all the Blender versions, when you set a custom object and it's not aligned correctly, you may have to go to a shape in edit mode and tweak its orientation so that the bone shape orientation is correct. And actually another way to correct this is to use the effect only origins option and rotate the origin so that the Y axis aligns with the length of the bone. Then the shape will match easily. But in newer Blender versions, we now have a lot more control over our custom object. I can use scale, translation, and rotation to orient the shape exactly as I want. So if watching an older tutorial which is doing something complicated to align the shape, skip that part and just use these transforms. And something else we got in newer versions of Blender is wire width, which will make your bone shape thicker and therefore easier to see and easier to select. When a bone is in bendy bone modes, we can control its thickness. In earlier versions of Blender, the shortcut for that used to be control alt and s but now this shortcut is reserved for save incremental. And the new shortcut is Control alt shift ns I wouldn't be surprised if in a future version of Blender, controlling the thickness of a b-bone can only be done with a shortcut involving two hands and a foot. Also keep in mind that you can go under bendy bones and tweak the size this way. Here you even have individual control over the x and z axis. Now we'll cover slotted actions. Up to Blender 4.2, each object had to have its own action. So if I animate this cone and the cube and go to Dope Sheet and switch to Action Editor, you'll see that we have a cube action and a cone action. The one exception was armatures. Each armature will also create its own action. But for armatures, each bone creates its own track within this action. So here, for example, I can have the arm and the leg animation in the same action. And it became even more complicated when we animated non-transforms, such as the properties of a material. It was possible to do, but Blender would create a hidden action that we had very little control over. I would have to switch to Dope Sheet, and then to really see the keyframes for this material change that I did, I would have to go to the Shader Editor and make sure that this node which contains the animated property is selected. And then in the Dope Sheet, I'll finally see these keyframes. 
In Blender 4.3, we don't have yet slotted actions, but there was an important update nevertheless. So each object still has its own action. However, we now have this animation tab, and we can create and control the actions for our material and shader node tree. So here, if I animate the same property, you'll see that a shader node tree action was created for me. These actions will still not be visible in the action editor, so it was just an intermediary step towards slotted actions. In Blender 4.4, we actually got slotted actions, which means that we can now bring the animation of multiple objects under the same action. Here is how it works. If we just start in adding keyframes, then Blender will automatically create separate actions for each object as it did before. To make use of slotted actions, you need to go to Dope Sheet, Action Editor, create the action manually. You can also go to the Object tab here and Animation and create the action from here. Now I can animate this object and it will get a sub action within this slotted action called Legacy Slot. I can rename this to Cube. Next for the cone, I'll also use the slotted action and click new on the sub action. This way it will automatically name it cone and now I can animate it. And now both the cube and the cone are under the same action. So a slotted action is a bit like a container for sub actions and the sub actions are what we used to call actions in previous versions of Blender. I can include the armature under the same action. and even the material. I'll make sure that shader node tree is set to the slotted action, create a new action, and animate a material property. Now the shader action is not yet visible. We have to either again select the node or disable the selected only option, and now it will show. This new system allows us to organize our actions better, and it should enable other advanced workflows, as well as giving us better control when exporting out of Blender. When following an older tutorial, which doesn't have slotted actions, just create one action with one sub-action, and that will accomplish the same thing. These are some of the biggest changes that happened in the last couple of years, and they have the greatest potential to confuse you. There may be more, so if you encounter issues that are related to Blender UI changes or feature changes, let me know in the comments. Maybe I can help you right away, or maybe we can have part two of this video. This guide so far should help you follow recent Blender tutorials with the most up-to-date interface. But I just want to quickly show you that even if the tutorial uses this interface, the rigging features will still mostly be the same, so you will be able to follow the tutorial. Here I can still press Shift-A and create an armature. I can go to pose mode and edit mode, use Shift-D to duplicate bones, E to extrude, everything is the same. A big UI difference here is that the tabs are here at the top instead of on the side, but that should be okay. Again, we have an armature tab and in here are the display modes. Instead of in front, we have X-ray, but it works the same way. We have the old layers, which we had until Blender 3.6. They work the same way. And if I want to set constraints, I can select bones, control shift C, so exactly as new Blender versions. The constraint options are mostly the same. They may be organized a bit differently. Maybe here they're horizontal, in the new versions they're vertical, or the buttons are different, but the functions are mostly the same. So following tutorials with this Blender interface should definitely be possible. And I can even recommend Dan Pro's channel, which has amazing rigging content. It's just that it uses this older Blender interface. And also the Humane Rigging course, which is also available for free on YouTube, is a classic in Blender rigging and contains really good technical explanations of rigging concepts. So now you should be able to learn from it. Now I know I'm pushing it a bit here, but this is Blender 2.49 with the even older interface. And I was surprised, but the rigging system in this version is already close to what we have today. And I was able to rig a character more or less the same way as I do with new Blender versions. I'm actually planning a fun video demonstrating how I rig in this old, old Blender version.